In this short video, I'll explain how through data analysis and through talking about data analysis, you can ensure that your study is trustworthy and valid. So as you probably know, as you probably noticed, validity can be quite a complex and overwhelming concept in qualitative research. But essentially, I do have a separate video about validity, but essentially, in essence, validity is about whether your findings, your study can be trusted. There are many different ways in which validity uh, can be achieved, uh, such as peer debriefing, uh, triangulation, member checking. Again, I list all these in a separate video where I talk about different strategies to achieve validity. However, what I feel is very often overlooked is uh, the role of data analysis and talking about data analysis in achieving uh, validity. If you watch my videos, you know that I usually uh, recommend and I usually promote a very detailed and very in-depth uh, approach to data analysis for many, many reasons. So usually it's about just knowing that you're really uncovering what there is to uncover in your data. So I often explain that if, uh, if you're dis uh, very descriptive, if you're very detailed in these initial stages, that's the only way to, to minimize your bias, which by the way is of course one way to, or one aspect of achieving validity is exactly about minimizing your bias. But also as a result, it's about making sure that you're really finding what the data is giving you, what the data has to offer, rather than, for example, finding what you're expecting to find or what you really want to find. So that's the only way. You have to be very, very detailed, then you'll, you'll find plenty of interesting information. Of course, provided that the data has been uh, collected and the data uh, collection instruments have been developed in a good way. So then, like I said, if you're if you're being detailed, if your approach to data analysis is really rigorous and really detailed, then it means that the findings are valid because the findings can be trusted. They have been obtained uh, through this strict and rigorous approach. And rather than being, for example, the reflection of your bias or what you expected to find, they are actually reflecting what there is in the data. So that's, uh, that's uh, the thing number one to remember. But, but then, what uh, once we get this out of the way, so the analysis itself, there's one more thing that we have to remember. Namely, we have to make sure that others also know that these findings can be trusted. So what do you do to achieve that? It's simple, you describe it. So I often say, and I also have a video in which I explain that it's a very common mistake not to be transparent about what you did. So people talk about, uh, th they, they insert theoretical um, elaborations and explanations and reflections on, on what thematic analysis is and what data analysis is in general and how qualitative researchers analyze the data, but what they fail to include is evidence from the data. So uh, have a uh, feel free to have a have a look at my other video in which I go into much more detail of this of how to report the findings. But that's what's very often missing. So the reader essentially has to rely on just on what you tell them and rely uh, just has to assume basically that they can trust you. But there is no evidence. They don't know exactly what happened. So I often explain that this is exactly where you really have to be very, very transparent. And this is nothing new because many authors do uh, include this uh, sort of thing in their classifications for how to achieve validity. Uh, what doesn't always help is that the term itself can differ. So it, it's, you know, it can be referred to as trustworthiness as, you know, validity or something else. So there are different uh, classifications for that. And then within the different classifications, there are also different terms to describe uh, what I just what I just described. So essentially being transparent and, and, and providing this in depth, in depth and, and transparent insight into what we did in our study in general, including data analysis. So here, for example, you can look at some some example concepts that are relevant to this uh, to this topic and something that you can consider and use in your uh, chapter in your writing so this can be transparency and coherence by yardley i'll probably be butchering all these names so i may actually give up after a while but uh, but they talk about basically about transparency in the process then audit trail something i often uh, comment on as well so that's something i i often tend to refer to from robson uh, but then even uh, things like reflexivity, again, are about transparency, are about being reflexive, but also talking about the whole process uh, and, and being transparent about your role and what you did in the study. Then you have dependability, member check-in, which is uh, not exactly that, but still could, could be related to transparency. Uh, thick description, a very popular one, uh, process transparency, confirmability, which is, again, a little bit more about uh, the, the role of the researcher and bias 
but could be argued to still have to do with transparency. Then you have researcher posi positionality, which is again, similar thing. Uh, then you have transparency of data analysis. You have epistemological transparency. So not exactly the topic of this video, but something to consider. Uh, and others such as methodological transparency. Don't forget to check out my ebook entitled Scholar's Guide to AI Assisted Thematic Analysis, which is a useful resource for thematic analysis, whether you do plan to use AI or not. It contains plenty of useful advice, step by step instructions for thematic analysis, and a list of prompts that you can copy and paste into ChatGPT. So you can see that the term is definitely not new, but it's just something to be remembered. And I just encourage you to really be transparent to really use that analysis and the way you talk about uh, your analysis as the main argument for how these findings can be trusted because essentially the findings of the study do depend mostly on the analysis and that's it i hope that you enjoyed it please uh, like the video if you did to help others find it please uh, put your questions in the comments and also don't forget to explore my free uh, patron community my patron blog specifically which is something i'm developing now the blog will be free forever uh, in the future, I'll be adding more features to it, but the blog will be free. So there's plenty of useful uh, stuff in that blog, academic articles and not so academic articles. And also I welcome uh, all uh, contributions uh, from you. So any input from you, uh, feel free to reach out if you think you want to contribute with your own article.